thank you for joining me for Quarantine Kitchen. So what we were just trying to do, I subscribed to this really cool new streaming service that hopefully for Wednesday and Friday will let me go live to you guys on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. But um, hope everybody's doing okay today. It feels like kind of like an extra Monday to me. Um, if we haven't met, my name is Julie. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. It's super gloomy out today. We've been in kind of quarantine status for about a week and a half now, so it's almost becoming like a weird new normal. And what I figured I would do, I'm a chef, a healthy cooking expert. I do a lot of recipes for WW, hide all my WW friends out there. And I just figured that the best way for me to make myself useful to you all was to go live a few times a week and show you something really fast that you can make at home with whatever the heck you have on hand. Um, I know a lot of us are working from home now. Um, maybe you're used to getting takeout more for lunch and for dinner, and I wanna make it so that you still get to have some really fun things to eat uh, while you're quarantined and working from home and stay as healthy as we can. But I do think, and give me a thumbs up if you guys think this is a good idea. I think on my Friday go live, I'm gonna make it like a party vibe and still keep it kinda healthy, but have us uh, do something really fun to make for happy hour or for the weekend. So give me a thumbs up if you guys are kinda psyched about doing something a little bit fun on Fridays, because I think with the current status, we all deserve something a little extra fun. All right, so today I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna show you guys how to make one of my favorite hack meals for lunch, dinner, kind of whenever, and they are grain bowls. Now, these grain bowls are gonna become something that you make for yourself all the time. Oh, yay, I see so many thumbs up coming up for um, the happy hour vibe on Friday. Yeah, we're all gonna need it. I feel like it's been happy hour every day around here and I need to kinda, <laughs> kinda get back to a regular routine at this point, to be honest. So grain bowls, the reason why I love these so much all the time, quarantine or not, they're a great way to use up pretty much whatever the heck you have left in your fridge or in your pantry. And there are so many cool, fun, different combinations that you can really make it something that is customized to the flavors you like or your family likes, whether you're cooking for one or you're cooking for a whole crew. Um, cooking for one, they're great because you can make one or two of them, keep one in the fridge to bust out when you're on that conference call, Zoom meeting for lunch and you need something fast. If you're cooking for a whole crew of people, they're great too because if you've got a family, when my girls were little, I would actually put out a whole bunch of ingredients and then let us all make our own little bowls using, oh no, I think my Facebook just went dead, you guys. Ah, uh, hold on one sec. Ugh, technology is not cooperating with me today, you guys. It is such a Monday, it's making me a little crazy. All right, let me try this again. I lost all my Facebook friends over there. Hey, Facebook, you guys need to figure this out. Zoom seemed to step it up and figure things out for us. We need you guys to let us go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. All right, sorry, I'm back. Grain bowls. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I was an engineer before I became a chef, so I kind of can be a little bit of a nerd sometimes with how I break things down and explain them, but this is how I like to design a really easy grain bowl for myself. Grab yourself a bowl and we're gonna divide it into thirds. And what I usually do is do one third, some kind of healthy grain, or if you're really avoiding carbs and grains, although I think a lot of us are just kind of eating what we have now, you could use rice here, you could use quinoa, barley, uh, farro, pretty much whatever you have. You could do cauli rice, if you guys are into cauliflower rice. Um, I actually cooked myself a little bit of stuff called right rice, it's like a veggie rice. So you're gonna do one third grain or rice, then we're gonna do one third beans or lentils. So today the one I'm gonna make is gonna be kind of like a Greek vibe. It's gonna be a Greek shrimp and rice bowl, but I want you guys to be thinking you could just as easily do something like brown rice, black beans, corn, give it more of a Mexican vibe. So we're gonna start with a third green, then a third beans, and then I like to do a third veggies to keep the base of your bowl healthy. Now my fridge is kind of pretty low on fresh veggies at the moment. Um, I ate through them last week. I'll show you some tricks that I've been doing to make them last a little bit longer because I don't know about you guys, I am trying to avoid multiple trips to the supermarket at this point. Um, I do have a delivery coming tomorrow and on Wednesday I'll let you guys know how it goes with a service called Imperfect Foods. They deliver like, um, kind of like the potato that has the extra bump on it, like any veggies that look a little weird that aren't being sold in supermarkets because um, it's been hard to get things delivered around here. So the base of your grain bowl, one third grain, one third beans, one third veggies. So what I'm gonna start with here is a little bit of right rice. 
And I'm guessing you guys all have. Give me a thumbs up if you guys have some kind of grain or rice or anything like that at home. And by the way, if you're hooked on your cauliflower rice and you can't find it right now and you don't want to be going out to the store, here's a really cool hack for you if you've never made your own. It's so easy to DIY your own cauliflower rice. You just take a head of cauliflower or cauliflower florets, uh, fresh you have to do, unfortunately. Frozen would come out kind of mushy. And you either grate it on a box grater or you can put it into a food processor and just give it a few pulses to chop it up and you just DIY your own cauliflower rice. So that'll get you through if you guys are into that. Then, I know we all ran out and got a bunch of beans, right? <laughs> Whether you got yourself canned beans, I love chickpeas all the time, quarantine or not. Um, if you have dried, you could just cook a pot on the stove or in your slow cooker or in your instant pot. Just rinse and drain them from the can first. Um, and by the way, some people love to use, I don't know if anybody's ever played with this, chickpea water, the liquid that's in the can, um, people are calling it aquafaba. It actually can be used, you can whip it into almost like a meringue and use it in place of egg in some baking recipes. So if any of you need to like find an egg to do some brownies or some cookies or just to make other things, if you're keeping it vegan or not, you could save the chickpea water. Just a random idea. So we've got one third of my right rice, like a veggie rice, one third chickpeas, building our grain bowl for everyone who's just joining me here. Um, by the way, on my Instagram, at cookingwjulie, last week I shared some pictures of different grain bowls, and on my website, cookingwjulie.com, I've got a ton of grain bowl recipes, so you guys can check those out just for some fun ideas. Okay, now, one third veggie. I usually like to do fresh here for some crunch. Baby spinach would be great, or kale, some tomatoes, but yeah, I don't, I don't happen to have any in my fridge either. But what I did have, and those of you who joined me last week saw me doing this, um, any fresh veggies you have that are starting to get a little limp and sad looking and you wanna make them last longer so you can keep eating healthy without running out to the store every five minutes. I've been taking all my fresh veggies and sauteing them just in like garlic, a little cooking spray or a little olive oil and making them into freezer packs. So you know how all those people went out and hit the frozen food section so hard and there was nothing left for the rest of us? Well, whatever, we can make our own at home. You guys don't have to worry about it. So what I made here was just like some quick peppers and mushrooms. You could put onion in there, baby spinach, whatever the heck you have. So I'm gonna add one of my packets. I just warmed it up a little bit to defrost it. I've got some like tricolor peppers and onions here. So I'm gonna add those to the bottom of my bowl. Okay, and don't worry, we're gonna play chopped at the end too. I hope you guys are thinking about what you have on hand in your fridge. I'm waiting for some of my friends to come on here and punk me and say they've got some like weird stuff in their fridge, by the way. Okay, so check it out. We're making a grain bowl. One third grain, one third beans or chickpeas or lentils, one third veggie. And again, we're going with a Greek vibe today. You could totally take this in a Tex-Mex or Italian or whatever you happen to have or what you like. So now that you've got that done, I am gonna add a little bit of crunch to this. I found some sad celery in my fridge. I'm sure you guys have some sad celery somewhere back there. A little tip for you, you can also chop up the leaves of the celery and they give a really burst of like awesome, herbal, fresh veggie flavor, so you don't, don't have to throw out the leaves. You can just chop them up and add them right in there. But celery lasts for a really long time too. And another reason why celery is a good one to have, any soup makers in the house, and I'm gonna definitely do a quarantine kitchen on how to make a soup with whatever the heck you have, with anything. You can also chop up celery, carrot, and onion raw and freeze it in little baggies like I did with my peppers, and then you've got yourself a little fast soup starter or stew starter all tucked away in your freezer. And that'll last all the way through, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna make any guesses about how long this is gonna go on, but it'll definitely last for a while. So, the other thing that's fun about this, it's colorful, it's pretty, you can really make it, um, make it your own and make it, I'm all about trying to keep it fun and happy. Hopefully you guys are getting that vibe from me. It's a gloomy Monday, so I might be a little more subdued than usual, but, um, let's try to have a good time through this and find the happiness wherever we can, right? And make ourselves smile and definitely try to eat as well as we can. Okay, that was the only chopping or cooking you had to do, by the way. So here's the start of our grain bowl. Now here's another one I really think would be great for you guys to get next time you do an online order or you hit the supermarket. I actually always tell people in my YouTube videos and my cooking classes and things to, to keep this on hand. It's one of my favorite pantry, pantry freezer staples, frozen cooked shrimp you know, like the stuff you would use for a shrimp cocktail. The reason I love keeping these in the freezer, they keep for a really long time. When you're cooking for one or two or you wanna make a fast meal for yourself, 
you just yank out like five or six of these guys from the freezer and it takes seriously you guys like three minutes to defrost them all you need to do if you've never done it you just put your shrimp in a little colander like this rinse it under some cool water for like two or three minutes in the sink and that's it and once they're defrosted you can add them to salads you can make um, you can make shrimp salad with it you could add it to a stir fry just add it at the end so they don't dry out same thing you could actually throw them frozen just like this into a stir fry or into a soup so pre-cooked frozen shrimp are a really great one oh cool hi jerry i always use celery leaves and soups etc it provides great flavor i know and that's one of those things people throw out and you know what I keep joking with everyone. My grandma helped teach me how to cook. I watched her cook a lot when I was little and I've always laughed that I've kind of got like mad grandma cooking skills with like making do with whatever the heck I can find in my fridge and it's actually finally coming in handy. I can share these ideas with you guys too. So back to our little Greek shrimp grain bowl. We're adding our shrimp to the top. If you're not a shrimp fan, you could put chicken on here if you had leftover grilled pork, pork chop, pork tenderloin. If you're vegan or veggie, you can totally just leave these as is. It's starting to look really cute. Again, I'm all about making it look bright and colorful and pretty. I'll give everyone a peek. We're making Greek shrimp and rice bowls and this whole uh, quarantine kitchen episode is about how to DIY your own grain bowls with whatever the heck you have in the house and in the pantry. Some other ideas, you know all those condiments that are like lurking in your fridge on those shelves, taking up space, maybe leaking out and making things sticky? It's their time to shine. I think it's time for you guys to dig to the back of your fridge and see what else you have in there. Roasted peppers, anyone? I bet someone's got, who has roasted peppers in their fridge from some recipe a while ago and they're still hanging out? All of your condiments are fine unless they've got, <laughs> it sounds so gross, unless they have fur growing on top of the liquid that you'll know, you'll know right away if they're moldy. Otherwise they're in like a vinegar solution and they really do keep for a long time. So I'm gonna add some roasted peppers to my shrimp grain bowl. Here's another one that you guys might have bought for some reason and you've got hanging out. You could have, oh, I just thought of another one, but I don't want to turn my back on you, but I'll use it next time. Um, pickled peppers, pepperoncini, um, those like Italian marinated veggies, you know, the ones like the cauliflower, carrot, celery, any of those would be amazing in this grain bowl. I've all got some artichoke hearts here. You guys might have some jarred or some canned. They're just going to add great flavor and color and texture, and it really is a time to be hitting, hitting up your condiment section of your fridge and cleaning it out. Another good one. I love these. Capers. You guys like capers? And the reason I like these, they're going to add that nice Greek brininess to them, uh, to this bowl. You could also add some like salmon. I don't know if anybody is lucky enough to have salmon in their house right now. I do not, but that's why I went with my frozen shrimp. So I'm going to hit it with some capers for a little more color and flavor. Give everyone a peek there are lots of people just joining us we are making grain bowls and if you go back i'm going to post this on my igtv you guys so be sure to follow me at cooking w julie um, i'm going to do this three times a week monday wednesday and friday and give you an easy idea for something to make um, this is just my basic formula for making a diy grain bowl for yourself for lunch or for dinner or whatever okay so we've got most of our base done another great one i know you guys have olives in there Everyone's got some olives hanging out in the back of their fridge, right? And they're gonna add, again, that nice, just extra bright, sharp flavor when some of the other ingredients you're adding could use a little boost. Add in my olives. Next, I did happen to have some kind of sad looking fresh herbs left in my fridge, but I was really happy to have them. And if you do have fresh herbs, you can wrap them in a damp paper towel to help keep them fresh longer and trim off the ends. Other people I've seen, I'm always afraid to do this because I feel like I'll knock it over, but you can put the stems as if it's a plant into a glass of water in the back of your fridge and that'll help your fresh herbs stay fresh longer. I'm just gonna tear some mint and parsley. Anyone, ever, anyone give me a thumbs up if you have fresh herbs or am I like being crazy? These were left over from a recipe project. There are lots of people joining me too. We already made a decision on here, you guys, here at Quarantine Kitchen that Friday's episode is gonna be a happy hour, fun party weekend recipe for you. I'll try to keep it kind of healthy because a lot of my followers are more of a healthy bent. I do a lot of work with WW with Weight Watchers and such. So I'll keep it light, but I think by Friday of these quarantine weeks, we deserve to have a good time and I'm gonna help you. Okay, see, now we've got our fresh herbs. Final little touch here. 
I love keeping feta in the house. Feta, Parmesan, those are things that will keep for, I was just checking in the comments over here. Those are things that will keep for a really long time. I don't think mine are so fresh anymore. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. You know what, and I haven't even really been able to get, um, I'm, not, I'm skipping the supermarket personally, so I'm just gonna try to make those herbs last as long as they can. But I'm also gonna show you how to bust out all the dried herbs that you have from like the spice set that you bought that you've never used. We're gonna come up with ways to like help those shine and come into play during this quarantine kitchen timing also. Anyway, <laughs> that was a long mouthful. So I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of feta. I know there's like a thing about cheese and fish, but I don't mind feta with shrimp when I'm doing a Greek bowl like this. Again, for everyone just joining, we are making Greek shrimp and rice bowls. Okay, see, look how pretty this looks. So we started, just to rewind for everyone who joined, here's your basic formula for putting together your own grain bowl. Divide your bowl into thirds. One third grain, quinoa, brown rice, cauliflower rice, farro, um, gosh, barley. You guys probably have something like that in your, in your pantry, right? And you can just cook yourself a little batch to keep in the fridge. I also love these because you can eat them cold or warm, which is a good one. Today's kind of yucky here in Hoboken. It's a little dreary and cold. I might like this warm, but hopefully spring is really gonna hit us soon and then you can enjoy something like this cold too. One third grain, one third beans or lentils. I have chickpeas going on today. You could do black beans, um, you could do gosh, what else? Uh, kidney beans, whatever kind of beans or lentils you have. Then one third veggies. What I've been doing everyone is sauteing and freezing my fresh veggies into little individual baggies like this. That's gonna let you keep eating yummy veggies all the way through all of this without having to run out to the supermarket all the time. Or, you know, if you didn't get to hit the frozen food section fast enough to stock up. Then I topped it with some frozen shrimp that I defrosted, some condiment section things. So now all we need seriously to finish this off is a little drizzle of like some kind of dressing. Now, if you're really in a hurry, you can use your basic balsamic that you might have in your fridge already. But to me, when it's Greek, this is what I really like to add. Red wine vinegar is what makes things really taste, give that Greek vibe. You can just drizzle a little tiny bit on top. And for my WW friends, I've been trying to keep this super low in smart points. Um, the only thing you would really have to track so far, I guess it depends on which plan you're doing, but go in and use your tracker. Uh, grain bowls are a great way to use up what you have. Just keep track of how much of each thing you're adding and put it in your WW recipe tracker. Then we'll do a little drizzle of olive oil. And guys, that's it. That was pretty easy, right? Give me some thumbs up. Who's, who can make a grain bowl? Who's gonna rock one of these this week for your work from home lunch? I'd like to see some thumbs up from you guys. I see lots of people on here. I'm not able to see who's here. And in a second, aw, hi. I see Melanie. What's up, Mel's Bells? Um, okay, let's play Chopped. Who wants to go? Someone give me an ingredient that you have a little bit too much of that you're looking for a fun way to use it up because you're kind of sick of eating it or maybe you're sick of eating it and you want to know if you can put it in the freezer and then I'll give you an idea for how to use it up when you take it out of the freezer. Anyone want to play? I'm waiting. Let me see. I'm going to look over here on my Facebook questions. I see lots of names that I know. Hi everybody. It's so nice to see you. I hope your Monday's going okay. I was calling it the Monday of all Mondays because it's really, really yucky here right now. Aw, oh, thank you for saying awesome. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a really basic idea for something to make and freeze if you have too much of it. Um, I know I went a little, I wasn't a hoarder. I'm not the one with all the cases of toilet paper in my house, but I definitely went a little overboard when I went shopping last week because here in Hoboken, we really legit weren't sure. Are we gonna not be told to not leave the house or the supermarket staying open? Thankfully, uh, it's, it's all okay. But again, I'm trying not to go out there. So here's an idea for you guys to use up seriously pretty much anything you have and something you can tuck in your freezer to eat like for the next few weeks. Any veggies you have left over that you're kind of getting tired of or starting to get a little bit sad, just saute them in some cooking spray, olive oil or garlic, right? Just keep them like really neutral flavored and basic. Um, I would chop them up first small and you'll see where I'm going with this. Then if you have any like so cooked sausage, chicken sausage, uh, breakfast meat, ham, even like cold cuts, somebody asked the other day about what to do with cold cuts. And if you had like salami or ham or anything like that, 
dice those up too. And you can make yourself a whole bunch of really cool mini frittatas. I should have busted it out. I don't really want to turn my back on all of you. But if you have a muffin tin, and I'm sure you guys do, just spray your muffin tin with some cooking spray. Put in your chopped up cooked veggies, whatever scraps you have that you're trying to use up. Put in some chopped up deli meat, pepperoni, salami. You could do turkey here. Uh, you could do ham, bacon, seriously, anything you want. You could leave that out. Then I'm guessing you guys have some eggs. Whisk some eggs. You don't even need to add milk if you don't want to, guys. Just pour it over the top. If you're doing your muffin tin, fill it up maybe three quarters of the way because these are gonna puff up in the oven. You bake them at, you could add uh, shredded cheese too. So it's also another awesome way to use up any little tiny bits of cheese. We're all, I was joking around earlier about like grandma, mad grandma cooking skills. We're all gonna be in the mode of like our grandma's always thought about don't waste, use everything up. So if you make yourself little mini frittatas like that in a muffin tin, it's an awesome way to finish up scraps of veggies, scraps of things from your condiment shelf. You could put little artichoke hearts in there. You could put olives in there. Cover it with some egg, bake it for, I think it's like 10 to 12 minutes. You'll see because the top will be set, like when you check the top of your, your frittata that's in the muffin, I was gonna say your egg cupcake, but that sounds really gross. <laughs> when you check the top, you'll make sure it's not too liquidy in the middle. Let them cool and then you can enjoy them for a day or two. But what I would do, honestly, just take them, let them cool and then put them in sandwich baggies and throw them in the freezer. And now you've got yourself a really fast protein, yummy, Gosh, anything. I could eat like things like that all day long. Breakfast, lunch, snack, whatever it is. So I hope that was that gave you a good idea. I'd love to see. Hi, guys. There's still people joining. If you're just tuning in now, um, I'm Julie. I'm a healthy cooking expert, a WW recipe developer, and I'm a total fun lover. And I'm trying to make the best of this quarantine situation. I'll be going live here three times a week on Instagram at Cooking w Julie on Facebook in my Facebook group. It's called Where Happy Meets Healthy, if you'd like to join there. And on my YouTube channel too, which is YouTube Cooking w Julie. I've got lots of uh, cooking videos you guys can check out if you want other ideas. And I'll always make sure to put this live video on my IGTV at Cooking w Julie afterwards too, um, and in my Facebook group. So if you missed the beginning and you wanted to see what I was doing, you can go in and you can watch. So. I'm gonna say goodbye in a second, but please be sure to tune in. Um, also feel free to DM me on Instagram, uh, message me over Facebook, shoot me an email if you want uh, through my website. It's cookingwjulie.com and I'll take requests. I would love to do episodes where I'm helping you out with whatever it is you'd like to learn how to cook. So if anybody has any more questions, I would be happy to answer them, but we've been hanging out here together for like a half hour now, I'm sure everyone. Hi, people are still saying hi. It's so nice to see everybody. Um, I really hope you can join me for some upcoming ones and I'm already looking forward to the Friday episode where we're gonna do a little cool, happy party recipe for ourselves or a weekend recipe for ourselves. Okay guys, I'm gonna say goodbye now and hopefully I won't look too spazzy ending the, the video session on both both my laptop and my phone, but have an awesome rest of the day. And I'm sending you guys big air kisses and big hugs from Hoboken too. Bye. See if I can end this. I only feel like I always keep talking. <laughs> All right. Bye Facebook friends. And bye phone friends, Instagram. <laughs>